And this is the Isaac Walton League Pitch Pine Bog Conservation Area and Nature Trail. And this is on way up on West Thomas Street. You got to go uh, way up. But it's pretty easy to spot. It, if you're going west, it would be on your left-hand side if you're leaving the city of Rome. If you go by this grayish blue house here, you went too far. And there's a big yellow house on the right side way down, a little ways down that way, about a thousand feet. You can't miss that either. Oh, let's take a look. And I have this on wide field view. Hopefully it gives you a somewhat of a better idea. There's not much for parking, but then again, there's more parking. I think you can probably use that building over there in the summertime. It's just nice in the winter because not many people use it in the winter time. It's like, ooh, a little chilly. Huh. Here's a Lund leash. Huh. Return the rack after use. I don't think it would hold a big dog, but not many people own big dogs. Rome Sand Plains Management Area. Open at sunrise to sunset. Close from sunrise to sun, sunset to sunrise. Well, that's pretty obvious. No campfires. Oh, what the hell? And just follow the trail markers. <sighs> this is only about, well, this is the first time of 2022 I've been on this trail. Last year I was on it a few times. I will admit I had a For your information, when you see trees like this, And, uh, you know, the tree bark is stripped off. It's because of a couple things. A, insects. B, it could be wind. Uh, you'd be surprised what wind can do to a dead tree. Uh, C, it could be deer rubbing their antlers up. You can see some of the scratch marks here. Uh, you know, got to rub their antlers. Uh, sharpen them up or I don't know maybe they itch it could also be porcupines porcupines love to eat tree bark and uh, it could also be raccoons which will also chew on tree bark I think it keeps their teeth filed down so you know they don't grow too big but uh, it is not Bigfoot doing it. You see people, they see tree bark missing from a in tree about 40 four or five years, feet up and they or say 20 Bigfoot. years. And no, it's not. These little trees Bigfoot. right here will be there pretty is no big. Such. Got a bunch of little seedlings. Pretty cool. Not that big. The amazing thing is, is that as they grow, the, the uh, dominant one takes over and takes up most of the water. So generally out of all these little seedlings, only one will make it. <laughs> a 
because it's pretty clustered in. And clustered in like this, they're all not going to make it. But one of them will. <laughs> Question is, is which huh. one? And it's not I was nothing to see maybe like an eagle nest. And we came right down through this way. Steep hill right there if you're climbing it in the winter time. Use like uh, snow grips, ice grips on your shoes. Because uh, you'll probably slide. But the trail is pretty well packed down. Uh, so a lot of people do walk on it when it's mild out. There'll probably be a lot of people out after work in the early evening, three, four o'clock. But if it's like 30 degrees, 34 degrees out or so, and I mean the air is filled with moisture, so it feels really warm, step on down to the uh, pine bog and just take a walk. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Just gotta be careful. But like I said, with the uh, hill, with some of the hills that go up and down, elevation-wise, uh, if you don't want to fall, either walk in the new snow where people haven't, give you some grip, or just use ice cleats. And uh, a lot of, some people have, because I can see the holes in the snow. It looks like somebody was wearing golf shoes. But, uh, that's, it's smart to do so. Me, I take very little steps when I go down these hills in the winter. Scariest thing in the world is uncontrollable sliding and you, you can't stop it. I don't see any aliens in the trees. Of course, they're probably invisible. <laughs> Camouflage, so I can't see them. I see a squirrel up there. Probably a lot there of squirrels. There is not one piece of tree bark on it. <laughs> All the way up to the top. But like I said, it's weather, it's erosion, porcupines, even squirrels will chew on bark. Uh, but mainly it's weather erosion. Wind hits it when the tree is dead, eventually the bark comes off. It's... <laughs> You know, people see tree bark missing from a tree uh, 10 feet high. They say, oh, it's Bigfoot. Folks, it's not freaking this big freaking tree. Get a life. Look <laughs> at that thing. Holy cow. I want this tree in my freaking front yard. That thing is huge. Word to describe this tree except for glorious. Look at the and size the of, I mean, my camera is now straight up. I mean, oh my God. If I was a squirrel or an eagle, I'd be happy as hell to be in that tree. That is something. Damn. Yeah, I think the linear format comes out a little better showing the trees. You don't get that uh, fisheye effect. Wow, look at those trees right there, two of them. See the way they collapse? Look how they're so perfectly put together. Oh my, Bigfoot must have knocked that tree down. Yeah. It's like a warning sign to people not to come in here. <laughs> now you know how stupid those shows are. I do love watching them, though. I get a real kick out of them. Huh. 
I like this trail a lot. It, like I said earlier, it's not like the uh, trail at uh, Verona Beach State Park on the opposite side of Verona Beach Park. There's a large nature trail. Uh, it's not marked very well, and one time I got completely lost in there. Uh, what I thought was going to be about a 30-minute ride turned out to be over two hours. Completely lost, and it was loaded with bats. I was getting bombarded by bats on that trail. So, FYI, uh, state of New York, you need to mark that trail at Verona Beach Park. A little better. Look at those trees. Another thing that knocks tree bark off of trees, woodpeckers and mice, especially pileated woodpeckers or pileated. I say pileated, but uh, this is how you can tell. See how it's rectangular? That's uh, a pileated woodpecker. The rest of these are smaller woodpeckers. Mice generally make a home in them. <sighs> Nothing special. Near uh, one woodpuckers. end of the trail, it veers, uh, I'm trying to think which direction this is. I'm kind of lost here. I believe it's westward. Uh, so you're going westward. I was going south but it veers off westward. There's no marker up there, but you'll see the footprints in the trail. I stopped here because this tree right here, I believe, is where I had a campfire a couple years ago. And I had it right in here next to the tree, probably about 10 feet from it. But there was just so much dry wood I had that thing built up about five feet high before I torched it. <laughs> Which made it nice because the nighttime temperature plummeted. It was like 70 in the daytime and it went down to probably about eh, 40 at night. Crystal clear skies. and uh, But the fire made it nice. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> And yes, I did put it out before I left. <clears throat> I don't want to be stuck out here, though. But I'm not the only one when I've the seen snow other... melts. It is probably literally like a swamp. But there's a lot of food, a lot of grasses for uh, animals and critters to eat. And of course, if the snow gets deeper, they're going to have a problem eating that. And it's not so much the snow getting deeper. Well, it is to a point if we get more snow. But what adds to the problem with animals is uh, if you get a long, cold freeze, say zero, temp zero degree temperatures at night, and it just hardens that snow. And animals just can't dig down to get to it. And that's why they starve. <laughs> Uh, to mice and small critters, digging through that hard-packed snow is like a, a person chiseling through concrete. That tree right there is definitely a favorite. But we're going to go home because it's getting late and I don't want to put up with rush hour traffic. A lot of crazy drivers out there. But getting here wasn't too bad. Pretty decent. But as you can see, my footprint right there is discolored. So there's definitely water in there. So it is pretty much like a marsh area, I imagine, in the springtime. I was just looking around for some uh, birds. I figure there's got to be birds. I don't hear a thing. Nothing. I think I spotted a two-legged creature walking through there. Oh my God. 
I'm sorry, but if I was a hunter and I saw a two-legged hairy creature walking around, I'd freaking shoot it. I wouldn't pull out my phone camera to take a fuzzy, blurred video of it. I'd shoot it. <laughs> That's why it's a hoax. The whole thing is a hoax. Okay, let's head back. Take one more quick look at my favorite tree. But uh, again, if you're not doing anything, and uh, I like the birch. Don't chop down the birch. It's a dying breed of tree. Uh, you know, and it's somewhat a mild day, like today is, you know, 30, 34 degrees. Humidity out is pretty decent. Come on in here. <laughs> I mean, it's quite least something. But like I said, be cautious. <clears throat> Snow can be slippery. But you can always notice more animal tracks. And with the snow, it's impossible to get lost. Unless you get trapped in a snowstorm. Uh, that is some damn tree. <laughs> Imagine how old this tree is. I mean... Wow. I mean, this tree has got to be ancient. Fascinating. Absolutely. You know, David Attenborough would love this tree right here. He would be just fascinated by it. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> That's a hell of a trail marker right there, too. You see that tree, you don't forget it. I mean, that is something. And my camera is straight up to see that. Fungus. Awesome. When I was walking in, this is facing the... Uh, I'd say the north side of the tree. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's right at the first bridge as you walk into the Pine Bog Trail. Huh. That's pretty neat. Just making sure it's solid. Just a little stream. I think after Saturday night, this thing will be completely frozen. Mountain bike. Saw so Bigfoot. Three of them. <laughs> and they got maps in here. I wish I noticed this before I started walking because I didn't know where I was for a second. Uh, as you can see. Nice map. So it's impossible to get lost. I'm taking two of these, by the way, because I always lose stuff. Whoops. Right back. And there's your trail map. 